clearly fighting and have already unlocked immense opportunities for structural biology, uh, this single structure narrative is not yet the complete picture of protein modeling. Uh, there still remains several open problems uh, and solving them will be essential to comprehensively interpret uh, the function of proteins. Uh, first of all, in living cells, proteins e execute their biological functions, uh, not as standalone molecules, but it's through uh, the extensive interactions with other molecules. Uh, and the main class of them is the formation of a binding complex with small molecule ligands. Uh, and just to give a brief definition, here a molecule is always referred to as a small molecule ligand, whenever it is not a building block of protein or nucleic acid polymers, and they can cover a broad class of molecules that exist in cell, which varies a lot in terms of chemical uh, of their chemical decomposition, chemical composition. And another essential aspect, but it's not yet addressed by state-of-the-art method like AlphaFold, is the intrinsic structure flexibility and conformational changes of proteins. Uh, as already discussed by many uh, experimental studies, protein structures are dynamically modulated by their interactions with small molecules, uh, such as ligands and post-translational modifications. And these dynamical protein conformational changes can occur from vastly varied kinetic scales, ranging from like nanosecond scale vibrations to millisecond scale collective motions, and they can trigger diverse downstream responses uh, that are crucial to the regulation of biological functions. So since the state-of-the-art protein folding algorithms are primarily concerned with the single structure view of the protein with like regression-based formulations, it remains unclear whether ligand binding effects and the consequential conformational changes can be accurately and rapidly predicted uh, using end-to-end -end deep learning approaches. Um, it is worth noting that there are a couple conventional strategies to tackle these problems. Uh, in the past few decades, several schemes have been proposed to remedy the prohibitive cost of simulating slow protein state transitions, uh, including methods based on like molecular dynamic simulations and enhanced sampling techniques. And more recently, there are also heuristic modifications um, to modify structure prediction networks, such as bootstrapping sequences from the multiple sequence alignment. Uh, there also exist more sophisticated pipelines like performing ligand docking guided by template-based modeling and iterative refinement. Uh, however, all of these methods often require case-specific expert interventions, and there lacks a unified framework to predict the 3D structures of the binding complexes uh, in an end-to-end -end fashion, uh, and at a throughput that we can systematically benchmark the predictions uh, with respect to experimental structures. Um, so we would like to tackle this funding complex structure prediction problem uh, from a generative modeling point of view. In particular, we want to incorporate small molecule ligand graphs in, uh, along with the protein sequence information, jointly fold the entire protein ligand binding complex 3D structure, and in a manner that we can quantify the structural fluctuations in a controllable manner. Uh, more formally speaking, we have a problem setting where we want to parameterize the conditional model distribution uh, using the sequence and graph inputs. And during the training time, we want to infer this distribution using samples obtained from experimentally resolved structures. And at prediction time, we want to sample individual structures from the inferred, um, uh, di inferred distribution, sample a structure in them, including states that are not observed in experiments. Uh, there are there exist a couple of challenges in terms of this generative modeling formulation. First of all, the data distribution itself is highly complex and, multi, uh, and is multimodal in nature. This is due to both the epistemic uncertainties in structure determination, uh, as well as the physical symmetries such as, such as the permutation between different uh, chemical groups uh, and multiple equivalent binding sites. Uh, and from a technical perspective, uh, proteins and small molecules are often represented as uh, different data structures in machine learning uh, practices. And proteins are most conveniently represented as their one-dimensional sequence uh, of standard amino acid building blocks. And they are large in the sense that they can have more than a thousand heavy atoms uh, in common cases. On the other hand, ligands are most um, primarily represented as uh, attributed chemical graphs. They are highly diverse in structure and in 3D space a uh, spinal conformational ensemble. Uh, in addition to that, we would like to make the model capable of incorporating uh, human feedbacks 
uh, and a simple manifestation of such feedbacks is target specific drug discovery workflows where we, want, where we would like to generate uh, ligand structures that correspond to uh, a desired type of interaction or desired binding site. Uh, to address these challenges, we developed a framework that is based on diffusion generative models. Uh, such a class of generative models essentially have the same uh, theoretical underpinnings as stochastic thermodynamics. Uh, in particular, diffusion models introduce a forward stochastic differential equation, uh, or SDE, that diffuses the data distribution into a noise distribution. Uh, and a neural network parameterized reverse time SDE uh, that generates data by reverting this uh, noising process. And the key quantity to be learned by the model is a gradient term with respect to a, a time-dependent potential, which in machine learning literature is called the score function. Uh, and to train the model to predict this score function, it is most, uh, it is most commonly done through the denoising score matching by leveraging the nice property of transition kernels of the forward SD. Namely, we want to, uh, it adopts a Monte Carlo estimator, and at each training step, we draw a sample from the training data set, uh, add a perturbation to the training sample by sampling from the forward time SD, and minimize the deviation between the sampled noise term and the model predicted score function. Uh, and building upon this formulation, we introduced a framework named Neuroplexer, which stands for a neural method for protein ligand complex structure modeling. Uh, to perform a prediction, the primary model inputs are the protein sequences, uh, the set of ligand molecular graphs. Uh, and optionally, we also retrieve representations from transformer-based protein language models uh, and backbone templates, which are like approximate uh, backbone coordinates sampled from like experimental sequence homologs or structure prediction networks like AlphaFold or ESMFold. Uh, in the forward path of the neural network, all of the binding site information and heavy atom coordinates uh, are predicted from scratch end to end. Uh, and it uses a contact predictor to sample protein ligand contact maps and parameterize a finite time marginal uh, of the stochastic differential equation, the forward SD. Uh, and we introduce an equivalent structure denoising module or ESDM uh, to generate all of the heavy atom coordinates by iterative, iteratively purifying the structure sampled from this tractable uh, forward SD marginal uh, using this denoising head. Um, in retrospect, we have drawn inspirations from both conventional multi-scale modeling strategies in computational chemistry, uh, as well as recent works on cascaded generative models in the design of many aspects of this neuroplexer framework. Uh, and here we are essentially using a trainable system to combine the local information derived from cheminformatics, uh, cheminformatics and physical approximations for molecular structures, and we call it the atomic track. Uh, as well as the semantic constraints on a coerced grain scale to perform geometrical modeling in a hierarchical manner uh, for which we call the, uh, the residue track. So for the residue track, uh, it performs the contact map prediction in an autoregressive manner. Um, while conventional ligand modeling strategies often rely on a predetermined structure with a mesh or grid-based representation to determine the ligand binding sites, uh, we overcome this issue by directly performing graph reasoning on the pairwise contacts, even in the absence of uh, structural inputs. Uh, in particular, given the protein coordinates and the ligand coordinates, uh, which are from our training data set, we define the contact map based on the pairwise distances uh, averaged against individual amino acid residues. And to account for the multimodal nature of the protein ligand distance distributions, uh, this contact predictor module of Neuroplexer uh, models the contact map as logics of a categorical posterior distribution. Uh, over a set of sampled one-hot observations. Uh, more explicitly in each iteration of the contact map prediction step, we sample a single one-hot vector from the predicted contact map logics and further discretize it into a block mask. And we add this block mask to the off-diagonal parts of the last step contact map predictions as a feedback signal. In such a way, we can naturally account for multimodality of uh, contact map distribution, such as for the case of uh, multiple binding sets. And this architecture of the, the uh, contact prediction module is inspired by recent works on region language models and protein folding networks. And it hybridizes a graph representation with sparsely connected edges. 
uh, as well as a subset of nodes that are densely connected to form a tensor representation. Uh, in the forward part of the model for the densely connected data branch, uh, it, com it combines both standard attention mechanism and the triangulated self-attention mechanism to perform direct reasoning for all of the pair representations between uh, among these subsampled nodes. And this is followed by uh, a synchronization step between the sparse representation and the dense representation using a cross attention mechanism. Uh, and all of these representations from the encoder and the sampled contact maps are later fed into the atomic scale track to guide the generation of the atomistic structure using the reverse time SD from the ESDM network. Uh, in particular, we proposed a set of forward SDEs with a drift matrix of separated length scale parameters uh, and with a polymer-like connectivity information so the forward diffusion process can erase residual scale local details before it removes global information about protein domain packing uh, and ligand binding interface into information. Uh, as illustrated by this uh, generation process animation, uh, the ESDM networks purifies atomic coordinates using this uh, reverse time SD uh, uh, you, uh, with a process that are homologous to a continuous inverse core screening process. And this process can be used to either generate the bending complex structure from random initializations sampled from the prior distribution, or it can be also used to refine protein structures by initializing from a finite time marginal uh, if we have a template structure as input. Uh, and we've, we have focused on developing the denoising model, this ESDM model architecture, so it can capture several essential physics uh, physical constraints, as well as the long-range geometrical dependencies in large biomolecules. Uh, two in prism important principles here are IC3 equivariance and chiral symmetry breaking. Uh, for IC3 equivariance, we are essentially constraining the model uh, to ensure that the output score function are, tra are transformed consistently uh, if we apply an arbitrary translation uh, and rotation global rotation transformation on the input structure uh, from the IC3 uh, special Euclidean manifold. Uh, on the other hand, for chiral symmetry breaking, uh, we noticed that the score function are in generally not invariant with respect to the point inversion uh, applied to the input structure since the molecules themselves are uh, often chiral. So in the past years, there has been a couple of works attempting to um, designed for sampling molecular structures using generative models based on the diffusion formulation. And then one of the straightforward formulation here is to directly manipulate, manipulate all of the atomic coordinates using an uh, equivalent neural network. Well, this formulation is very general and is often, uh, and is quite scalable to large molecular complexes. Um, it often, uh, such class of pure coordinate based generator mixes the correct uh, structure with the right chirality uh, with this mirror image due to the inability to incorporate chiral constraints into the uh, model architecture. One way to overcome this chirality degeneracy problem is to hand program the rigidity constraints of molecules into the generative model. And two of the, the, these approaches are, used, are the approaches that use 60 coordinate frame, frames, namely a set of uh, local rigid body nodes comprised of the translation vector and the rotation matrix, uh, as well as approaches that pre-initialize the molecular geometry using force field approximations uh, while only update the subset of torsion angles uh, in the Riemannian space. Uh, for 60 coordinate frame based approach, it has been very successful in terms of protein backbone generation and structure prediction, and it's indeed the approach adopted by AlphaFold. However, it is unclear whether such an approach can be generalized uh, to small molecule generation. And we anticipate that it will be very cumbersome to tabulate the set of rules uh, for rigid transformations, given the diversity of small molecule graphs. Uh, on the other hand, force field approximation can resolve the uh, chirality degeneracy issue in a very straightforward manner. However, this breaks the model differentiability if you want to deploy the generative model for uh, small molecule design. In such a case, we need to transfer the model gradient to the small molecule graphs, while the force field itself is not differentiable and it's unclear how to transfer the gra gradient for such kind of models. Um, and here, as we will be 
be demonstrating, um, we have designed a network that can satisfy all of the chiral constraints and IC3 equivariance, while at the same time being uh, highly scalable by only up directly updating uh, the heavy atom coordinates. And we also demonstrate that the model itself uh, can be proven to be end-to-end -end differentiable. Uh, the most essential design here is to hybridize two class of nodes, which are items, uh, and local rigid body nodes formed by uh, coordinate frames constructed from adjacent bonds that are subsampled from the input molecular graphs. Uh, instead of assigning a predefined set of rules for rigid coordinate frame transformations, uh, we simply sample a redundant set of coordinate frame nodes and use the frame embeddings to guide the structure update for all of the items in a relaxed uh, Euclidean space. Uh, this has also informed the construction of our uh, molecular representation learning model. Uh, namely, we const construct this set of uh, local frame nodes and iteratively perform message passing to update the pairwise representations between all of the atomic nodes and uh, local frame nodes. And we align these uh, uh, pairwise representations to the marginal distributions from uh, computed molecular conformers uh, using a mixture density network laws, uh, as well as aligning the global representations to harmonize the bioactivity data following a graph pooling operation. Uh, for the denoise module, uh, we first construct a heterogeneous graph com uh, by combining all of the rigid body nodes sampled from the protein and small molecule graphs. And we add these um, rigid body graphs uh, to the heavy atom nodes uh, comprises all of the items in the complex. Uh, the exact strategy we adopted to guide structure update using frame nodes is to generalize the geometry of our attention mechanism in alpha fold and to add the edge representations from both the molecular graph encoder and the contact predictor to the attention logic calculation as a relative positional encoding term. So once we have constructed the neural network, uh, the neuroplexer backbone, we benchmarked the model on a couple uh, simplified structure prediction problems. The first problem we were interested in is ligand structure prediction, uh, where we simply perform a rigid receptor blind ligand docking, uh, which is a relatively conventional problem. And here we assume the ground truth protein structure is known, and but no prior knowledge on binding site location or ligand structure is available. And instead, we simply we only use a model uh, to directly sample the binding, uh, binding site and ligand structures uh, conditioned on the protein information only. And the second setting we have explored is binding site structure prediction. And here we assume the ligand binding site location is known, but we predict both the cropped, uh, the residue structure, uh, sorry, the binding site structure and the ligand structure for a cropped region uh, within a certain cutoff of the true uh, ligand centroid. And we also noticed that this approach uh, can be interpreted as the generalized setting of induced fit docking, and it naturally accounts for pocket flexibility. Uh, and the third setting we have explored for benchmarking is ligand-guided protein structure refinement. And here we assume that ground truth ligand geometry is known, and we align an APO template to the ligand structure uh, on the correct binding site. And to perform this structure refinement, we first use the forward time SDE uh, to diffuse the template protein structure to a finite time marginal in order to, to erase all of the local detail but retain inf important information about protein domain packing. And then we use the reverse time SDE uh, ap approximated by the ESDM network to perform diffusion purification and recover the hollow state uh, protein structure. Uh, we first implemented the contact predictor as a relatively standard 3D graph neural network and benchmarked the model uh, on the blind ligand docking problems. Uh, and in terms of the baseline method, we compared the method primarily on the machine learning uh, ligand structure prediction method at the time, which is equibind. And here we show that neuroplexer can achieve both improved geometrical accuracy uh, as illustrated by the ligand heavy atom RMSD as well as the lower steric clash rate compared to equibind. And in particular, we found good ligand structure quality and geometrical accuracy can be achieved uh, using as few as 10 integrator steps, which in real time correspond to uh, 0.5 second per conformation on a single GPU. 
Uh, later on, we have performed more systematic evaluation in terms of plant docking uh, with, with respect to competing methods. And here we have explored more sophisticated designs in both protein and small molecule encoders and scaled up both the molecular graph encoder module and the contact prediction module. And furthermore, we have incorporated protein residue embeddings from a protein language model, which is ESM2. Uh, by doing that, we observe a substantial improvement in both the docking atomic accuracy uh, as well as the binding site prediction accuracy uh, here illustrated by the fraction of predictions with a ligand RMSD below 2 angstrom uh, and 5 angstrom respectively. Uh, and remarkably, we can achieve a success rate competitive to the private state-of-the-art deep dock by only sampling one structure per protein ligand pair, which highlights the effectiveness of contextual information uh, in the form of residual scale embeddings generated from the contact predictor. Uh, for benchmarking problems that involve changes in protein structure, we assess the prediction, uh, the structural predictions based on the following metrics. So the first one is the backbone root mean square deviation, measuring the uh, deviation between the carbon predicted car carbon alpha trace uh, to the carbon alpha of the reference structure. Uh, and the second metric is more commonly adopted in structural biology uh, community, which is called TM score. And here, a TM score of 1.0 corresponds correspond to an exact match between the predicted and the reference structure. And the TMS score, TM score of 0.5 roughly correspond to the correct fold. Uh, and the last metric is called local distance difference test dash binding site. Uh, and this metric essentially measures, measures the deviation between all of the pairwise distances uh, between the predicted and reference structure for a local region around the ligand binding domain. Uh, so on the problem of ligand binding site structure prediction, where we jointly generate the binding site residues and the ligand coordinates, we used the alpha fold predicted structures as the starting APO structures. Uh, first of all, we found a large fraction of these alpha fold structures uh, unsurprisingly contain steric clashes when directly superimposed to the ground truth protein ligand complex. Uh, it contains clashes with the ground truth ligand geometry, uh, given, uh, which is a direct cause of this, uh, this, the fact that alpha fold does not incorporate ligand information into structure prediction. Uh, on the other hand, our method can repack the bending set with an accuracy comparable to alpha fold, but with a substantial reduction in steric clash rate. Uh, in comparison, we also compare the predictions to Rosetta uh, by giving Rosetta ligand the privilege to initialize from the APO structures obtained from alpha fold. Uh, our combined metric of ligand docking accuracy, binding site accuracy, and steric clash rate, uh, we found that the inpainting model of Neuroplexer can improve the structure recovery rate uh, by up to 40% improvement compared to the method in Rosetta. Uh, and for the structure refinement test, we assessed Neuroplexer sampled structures for, state, uh, for 31 systems, which, re which represents proteins with biologically relevant uh, ligand binding induced changes to their structures. Uh, we have evaluated the predictions based on both TM score and LDDT BS metrics. And here we found that conditioning the sampling process um, on the ligand geometry can shift the sampled conformational ensemble towards the bound states like which are hollow structures, uh, as indicated by a consistent increase in both of the evaluation metrics. Uh, to further delineate how these moderate differences in the quantitative metrics are reflected in this sampled structures. Uh, in this very preliminary test, we performed expert evaluations for examples where neither the ligand bound nor ligand unbound reference structures is included during training. Uh, and as illustrated by these two examples, we found that the predicted protein structure motions are consistent with the reaction coordinates uh, derived from experimental structures. Uh, and finally, we moved on to train the neuroplexer model to perform direct structure prediction using the sequence and molecular graph inputs. Uh, for this end-to-end -end structure generation problem, we first benchmarked the model on 2,600 kinase structures curated from the PDB, uh, for which 90% are hollow complexes and roughly 30% are APO structures. Uh, for this experiment, we first confirmed that uh, IC3 invariant denoising loss function, uh, which is a modified version of the uh, frame frame aligned point error or FAPE from alpha fold. Uh, it's essential to break the chiral symmetry and we found it 
to also give rise to better local accuracy as indicated by the LGDT-BS score. Uh, following a correction scheme where we iteratively align uh, the denoised structure uh, to the previous step predictions. Uh, and moreover, we adopt a stochastic temperature adjusted sampler and introduce a correction scheme to improve the consistency between integrator steps and reduce numerical discretization error, which are found to improve the structure prediction accuracy. Uh, to give a brief summary of this approach, we note that for all of the diffusion models, there exists a deterministic probability flow ODE uh, that can reproduce all of the marginal distributions of the original reverse time SDE. Uh, in fact, this reverse time SDE can now be interpreted as uh, a deterministic step that runs backward in time in terms of uh, using the probability flow ODE uh, in combination of a long event equilibration steps um, along the energy landscape formed by uh, the potential defined by the data distribution at time t. Uh, and starting this approach, we can actually add auxiliary temperature parameters to the long event simulation, uh, to the long, long event dynamics part of the reverse time SDE. Uh, and gradually anneal this temperature parameter from the data distribution temperature uh, to a to a temperature that corresponds to a more crystal-like structures. Uh, as shown here, we found that the temperature adjusted sampler can consistently produce structures that are more crystal-like, uh, which are clear clearly reflected in the improvement of quantitative metrics uh, by comparing the sampled structures to the experimental structures. Uh, and on this kind of side, we then sought to understand whether the incorporation of ligand information actually improves the end-to-end -end protein structure prediction accuracy. Uh, and here we've obtained a confirmative result that can, in the sense that conditioning the generation process with ligands can consistently improve the local accuracy uh, for all the training data size, sizes that we have tested on. Uh, and interesting, we also found the model to give uh, the ligand conditioning to give rise to an improvement in the global protein folding similarity measurement, which is TM score. Uh, and our classical model for studying ligand-induced protein conformational changes, we have indeed observed a qualitative distinction between the sampled APOE structures and the binding complex structures. Uh, in particular, directly sampling the protein structure uh, using the protein sequence information only give rise to a transition state-like structures between hollow and APOE structures uh, on this E. coli uh, adenosine kinase uh, or ADK. Uh, on the other hand, uh, that jointly generating the protein and ligand structures using neuroplexure can highly selectively locate the sample ensemble uh, to hollow like uh, binding complex structures. So finally, we have scale, scale up, uh, uh, scaled up the neuroplexure model to all of the high quality data we can obtain from PDB, and we call this new data site PDB-leak.120k. Uh, and to test this model, we applied the a neuroplexer to the apo hollow contrastive, contrastive pair of pocket minor data site uh, to the subsite where the crystallography resolution is below uh, three angstrom. And we have intentionally held out this pocket minor data site based on their uniprot ID to make sure there's no sequence overlap uh, with the training data site. And first of uh, and in summary, we confirmed that owing to the state selectivity between the ligand-free and the ligand-bound protein conformations, we found the neuroplex that can achieve an improved structure prediction accuracy uh, compared to alpha fold 2 uh, But we also combine, combine the improved sampler from long event simulated annealing SDE. Um, to further analyze what, and confirm this improvement in accuracy is indeed from the selectivity between APO and hollow, conformation, uh, uh, hollow conformations. Uh, we performed pairwise structure comparison in terms of TM score uh, for all of the sampled structures with, with respect to uh, the experimental APO structure and the experimental hollow structure. And furthermore, we have uh, um, trained an additional confidence estimation height of neuroplexer uh, to assign a PLDDT confidence estimation score to all of the predictions. And here we found that, um, first of all, up, after applying a PLDDT filter, uh, we can further improve the uh, performance improvement to the enrichment compared to alpha fold two for this high confidence subsite. 
And when we look at all of the pairwise sequence similarity to APO and HOLO in terms of alpha fold structures, we found that alpha fold is sampling uh, a set of structures uh, that are evenly mixed between HOLO-like conformations and APO-like conformations. Uh, on the other hand, APO structures predicted by neuroplexer are overall uh, leans towards the uh, experimental APO-like structures. And on the, hard, on the hard hand, the bending complex structures predicted by neuroplexer uh, are very well aligned with uh, the experimental hollow structures, except for uh, one case where the protein structure prediction quality itself uh, is rather low, but that such a case can be properly identified by the confidence estimation head of neuroplexer. Uh, and as uh, for one example where we indeed found uh, Alpha fold is predicting the APO structure. Uh, we cl clearly identified that uh, neuroplexer predictions can discriminate uh, between ligand bound and ligand free state. And as visualized here, uh, we can find that uh, the neuroplexer sample ensembles are highly selectively clustered uh, towards uh, the two distinct experimental structures. Uh, and finally, we performed a uh, uh, estimation uh, and assessments on the relationship between the ability to resolve resolve holo and apo structures and the accuracy for uh, ligand structure modeling and here on a set of recently released structures after year 2019 uh, we found that the prediction accuracy in terms of the enrichment between holo and apo structures are very well correlated between uh, correlated with the ligand docking accuracy uh, which suggests that the accuracy ligand uh, the model's ability to accurately identify the binding site uh, as well as the ligand docking accuracy is a prerequisite uh, to perform accurate uh, holo structure prediction um, so with that i would like to conclude my talk so we have developed a generating modeling solution for joint protein ligand structure prediction uh, and we confirmed that the method can achieve state-of-the-art accuracy on both protein structure prediction problems and the ligand modeling problems. And the approach is generalizable to systems uh, with ligand-dependent protein folding landscapes. Uh, beyond method refinements, we are also looking forward to apply the method to design, like to protein design, the small molecule design problems, such as the joint sequence structure co-design for enzyme engineering using existing like hallucination-based or in-painting-based strategies. Um, this approach can also help initiate some experimental exploration for like scaffold condition active site design, uh, especially if we want to target city design problem uh, at a novel substrate where we cannot find a simple uh, binding site template from the protein data bank. Uh, and finally, we think this model itself is an initial framework for the incorporation of many auxiliary data akin to the process of incorporating co-evolutionary weak supervision signals into protein folding networks. Uh, and we anticipate some useful signals here are like the massive amount of bioactivity data like binding affinity, uh, the pyrase interactions between uh, protein residues and small molecules uh, from mass spectroscopy readouts, uh, and even those like multimodal natural language embeddings that already incorporate the small, incorporated the small molecule modality and we can potentially um, test whether such uh, multimodal language embeddings can additionally help the prediction uh, of binding complex structures. Uh, and finally, I would like to thank our collaborators, uh, really Arash from NVIDIA Research, my PhD advisor Anima, uh, and, to uh, and Professor Tom Miller. Uh, this approach is, um, this work is supported by, partially supported by the Amazon Caltech Air for Science Fellowship and Caltech Delogy Fund, and I would, I would also like to thank my uh, partial sponsorship from Intos AI. Uh, with that, I would like to thank your attention and please let me know if there's any questions. Thank you so much. Awesome, thank you. So I think we have two questions in the chat. Do if you wanna address them? And then after that, I'll give everyone permission to unmute themselves um, and openly ask questions. Okay, so Nathan asks on slide 15, you talk about representing the protein ligand structure as a graph of atoms. Am I understanding this correctly? If so, what is the max number of atoms can input in this model? Also, is the graph weighted for the protein structure? Yeah, great question. So uh, to clarify, so we are essentially representing the graph as 
two components. The first uh, subgraph components is com composed of all of the uh, high B atoms of the protein and ligands. And we also include uh, a set of auxiliary nodes, which are rigid bodies uh, subsampled from the protein sequence and the ligand graphs. So because of this, like all item component of the graph is very sparsely connected based on uh, the noise the structure itself, we apply a like randomized KN cutoff. Uh, the maximum number of items can be input this, of this model is roughly like um, 20,000. Uh, on the other hand, uh, for this subset, subset of uh, residual scale or like rigid body nodes, um, we restrained this set of uh, nodes to be 128 uh, rigid bodies. Uh, and in terms of the, this, whether this graph is weighted, if I'm understanding this question properly, uh, we are weighting the graph in some sense that we are um, applying, like adding extra embeddings to the like densely connected residual scale branch of uh, subgraph of this uh, uh, in this message passing process, and in this sense we are indeed adding more guidance uh, to the like residual scale subgraph. Yes, uh, hopefully this answers your question. Great, I think so. Um, so Gina asks, uh, what is the training testing data split based on? If it's dependent on when the PDBs were deposited, are you worried that the model is just memorizing rather than learning? Yeah, great question. So for the structure prediction test, we are doing both split. So essentially we are making our training data based on a time-based split, but out of this time-based split training data where are deposited structures before year 2019, we have additionally removed the overlap with this downstream pocket miner site. So it does not have sequence overlap with uh, this test data set. And for the time-based splitting itself, where we evaluated on new protein structures, um, although some structures are indeed have a homolog structure or identical sequence structure resolved before year 2019, uh, we make sure the new prediction target always have a backbone RMSD deviation uh, higher than three angstrom. So it is always made sure that the structure, although can be, although there might be some like very homologous structures in the PDB, but the uh, prediction set includes a novel conformation of the protein. Yeah. Great. Okay. So there's one more question in the chat that I'll read out. And then after that, if people feel comfortable, I would encourage you to unmute yourself and ask your question. Or um, if you'd rather, you can still put things in the chat. But for now, the question is, why is ligand protein distance distribution multimodal? Mm -hmm. um, I think a very direct manifestation of multimodality is like, in many cases, you have multiple valid binding sites. You can have a also steric binding site as well as the allosteric one. And for many ligands, the selectivity is not 100%. And in such case, we would like to cover uh, structures, well, the predictions that covers uh, all of the valid uh, body modes. Yeah. Yeah, when Marshall asking, how could your method be adapted to the novel ligand design? Um, yes, uh, I think one, there are like two parallel strategies we can potentially extend the method to small molecule design. Uh, first of all, we can attach some uh, activity predictions on top of the structure prediction model and back propagate uh, the, diff the diffusion model using uh, backward equations like the add joint method. By that way, we can directly propagate the signal from the bioactivity classifier um, to the from the structure 
to the ligand uh, to the ligand molecular graph itself. And then we can use like so-called hallucination method to perform like Monte Carlo iterations to maximize uh, the bioactivity. Uh, and then another approach is like we can remove, actually remove the small molecule graph constraints uh, from the input and instead just initialize random molecular graphs, uh, random molecular coordinates. And during the forward process, during the diffusion process, we can directly um, construct both the molecular graph uh, infer the molecular graph distribution as well as the uh, 3D structure distri distribution from scratch. Uh, um, we haven't already tried this approach, but I think they are very direct, like extensions to the current model. Um, yeah. Uh, Nina, thanks for asking, do you have any intention on benchmarking this with MD-based methods? Um, I think something we would we would certainly like to uh, uh, gather some evidences in terms of how the model predictions compare with respect to MD predictions. In particular, we are actually looking for a couple of, uh, a couple of cases where we can find some reference simulations, uh, simulation trajectories, uh, for which we can also gather neuroplexer predictions and do a examination with respect to this. MD trajectories. Uh, on the other, uh, but I would like to argue that a substantial advantage of this approach uh, with res versus traditional MD is uh, prediction throughput. And it is also fair to argue that MD simulations are inherently not designed for reproducing crystal structure. So while we are expecting such cases, uh, I think more systematic comparison with respect to MD must be left for a future work. Yeah. Okay, great. So if there's no further questions that people want to ask immediately, I think we would invite you all to also check out our Slack workspace where it's a great way to sort of chat with speakers offline. Um, we also have channels for job postings, internship postings, just discussing papers, etc. So um, quick plug for that. And then about communications for the talks going forward, I think we'll revert to emails. Um, so we should be sticking with the same way of receiving links just to minimize confusion for everyone there. And yeah, one more message from our other co-organizer, Amy. Um, if you are interested in giving a talk, feel free to reach out to us either on Twitter um, or on our website. Um, and with that, I think we're done with announcements. So thank you again, Zoran, so much like for bearing with us and the rescheduling um, and have a great rest of your day, everyone. Thank you so much.